Hi, this is Mantri Pout, and I'm a radio presenter at Metro FM as well as television uh, presenter. And I have been uh, thinking about starting something like this for a while. And I'm so glad that I did uh, with the help of my friend Kevin and uh, my other friend Bongani and Mahabi. <laughs> um, uh, this is going to be uh, a moment that we take to get to know each other, but also where you get to know some of your favorite personalities in South Africa. Um, I already do this on the radio, but I recently started doing this. As you know, if you've listened to me over the years, I've worked in teams on the radio, and recently, having found a space where I can work alone, I found that interviewing people is one of my favorite things. I like getting to know people and getting in there with them uh, and finding out what really gets them going. Um, so this is going to be an extension of that. I'm going to try bring you some of the most interesting personalities in South Africa, like my first guest that's coming up in a while, in a bit. Woo, not a while. Anyway, as you can see, it's going to be a fun time. My tongue's already riddled. Ah, can't wait for it. It's moments with Mansu. Thank you. Moments with Mansui, and my first guest is someone that I absolutely adore. She's very close to my heart. In fact, you're about to see a double of this face on screen. That's true, <laughs> my darling. A natural talker. Uh, Zan, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, my do, do you know why it's important for me to mention that you're a natural talker? Yes. Because I think one thing that people don't know about you is that you were a debater, or you did debating. I did. But like, international as well. Yes, honey. I went to New York. I went to Brisbane, Australia. Yes. Yes, I traveled the world to debate and everything. Third place world champs in Australia. How did you know that? Like, because I, oh, I have a producer who works. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I have a producer who works. But third place, how did that feel? How young were you? I was 17 years old, mm. I think. Or rather, I had just turned 18. Mm. And it was in the year, of course, where I was doing my matric. Yeah. And I think at the time, I wasn't necessarily at, like internalizing it, yeah. if I'm being honest. I think it was only much later when I was like, oh my goodness, I actually did that. More than anything else, it was stressful at the time. Yeah. Um, but God is good. And it was, I think, something that also kind of showed uh, just everything that my family has put into me. Because yeah. if I can share, I came third in the world for um, reading, like it was interpretive reading rather. Yeah. And uh, my mom used to read bedtime stories to yeah. me when I was a kid. So for me, it was like, ah, this thing that she used to do is what I went to go do. And then I placed third in the world. Yeah, so it was special. Another one that was really a surprise for me was that you went to New York as a prize after a, a science debate. Yes, nano, nanotech. Yes. Yay! Yes. Who are you, <laughs> what, am I, what am I hearing? Sorry, who are you, superstar? Because you knowing all of this. But um, I, for me, I want to say first and foremost, I'm a Decepticon. Uh, because okay. wh why do I know about science? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I went there and I pretty much, pretty much made them believe that I knew about the science. Yeah. And at the time, I wanted to be a doctor. Yeah. Uh, and you're from a family of doctors. Hundred yeah. percent. Yes. Unfortunately, my marks they didn't want to be doctors. Eh? But it's fine. We won't talk about that. Uh, but listen. All of us that are entertaining you, our marks had other plans. Not us. all of the plans. We had different plans. Yes. Our marks had other plans. Hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, but I think that that's what played into it. The yeah. fact that I really was interested in the science side yeah. and debating and science came together, and then we got to go to New York, baby. And you know what I always think of because you are very, you very close to your brothers, and you pretty much know every sport yes i imagined you would have gone into like sport broadcasting or sports casting yeah. uh, has that not been a dream can that be a new dream i mean I, do you know what i think Babe, that sport has money and it does <laughs> <laughs> if i knew any sport i'd go there I, but do you know what i feel like i'm diversifying in different ways yeah because i do the whole thing of emceeing for sports oh, so like yes. for example for netball and things yes, like that yes, i emcee yes. quite a lot um but when it came to sports casting i just don't think it was in god's plan at yeah. the time because i remember there was a point when um super sport did a test with me mm. and i got to do like a whole link and everything and they were like we're gonna call you and then they never did <laughs> Thanks, super sport. We, uh, got a, we have a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> yes. But um, I do think that just, and I mean, not to say that people who are in sport don't love people, yeah. but I think that my interest is in people. Yeah. And I'm inspired by getting to know the entertainers, the people who yeah. really, I will say, you know, are creatives mm. and where they come from, what they do, and all of those things. So I think that that love for it kind of won out. So, yeah. So you, you grow up and you have this dream of being a doctor and it doesn't happen, and mm. you find yourself 
at Tux. Yes. Tell me about the audition to get into Tux FM because I know that joining Campus Radio is not... You don't join Campus Radio thinking, I'm going to be on 5 FM. No! And I know for me, when I joined UJ FM, you're joining it, thank you so much. Thank you. You're joining it as an extramural in varsity. Something that you, you might enjoy and then you fall in love with it. How was that for you? How did you start at Tux FM? So for me, um, the reason that I chose Tux FM was yeah. because a friend of mine, she had also said she was going to go and join. Yeah. So I was like, hey, maybe like this would be good for me. Mm -hmm. So I went, I did the whole audition thing. And I think one of the only things that got me in was because when I got to the um, audition, they were like, OK, so tell us about your homies. Mm -hmm. and I was like, OK, so my homies are this person. And they were like, Zanele, we said your hobbies. And everybody oh. started laughing at me. Now I seemed funny. And at the time, I wasn't funny. I mean, now I'm not funny. <laughs> but I wasn't. It's just I didn't hear them. Yeah. Uh, but you know, God always has a plan. So yeah. So now you leave Tax FM. For me, it's wild that that was only four years ago, mm, right? And is. in the small four years, or the short four years rather, yeah. uh, you, when I met you, when you were at 947, um, you got to 5FM, how has that journey been for you? Because campus radio is so different from commercial radio. It is. Once you swim with the big sharks. Babes. <laughs> hey, it's lit. How yeah. has that been for you? So uh, I definitely think that first and foremost, God's grace yeah. has really been on my life because yeah. like you say, it really has been a sh big shift in yeah. the last four years. Yeah. Um, I think that I'm also really grateful that there were people like you, Manzoe. Yeah. And oh. I'm not just saying that I really, like when we got to Tax FM, I remember, I hope nobody from there is going to be watching this, but they were mean to us, okay? Yeah. And we were scared of them. And they even told us, and they were like, whenever you get to the commercial radio stations, like the people are going to be it's worse. worse. Yes. And then we got there and they were like, so the likes rather of you, mm. Tando, mm -hmm. Anele, all of these people who wanted to help you, Grant, like mm -hmm. Zweli, Pindi, like it's Karabo, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think that that made it a very easy transition, I won't lie. Um, and I know. Yeah, easier landing than some yes, of Yes, I was going to say, I was going to say that I've heard people's stories yeah. and it's, it's been terrible, but I won't lie. For me, Genuinely, people like you who were always just like, Zanele, let me teach you this. Zanele, come and ask me this when you want to. I mean, you even told me when I was going to leave 947. You were like, Sissy, go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, people that were always so open to it. I think that that made it a lot easier for me in terms of transitioning. Mm -hmm. I won't lie, in terms of hard work, it was a, hard, a whole lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, no one ever prepared me for but sleeping I've never, there. I've never seen anyone genuinely in the years that I've worked in this industry that works harder than you. Uh -uh, and I think, good. genuinely, I think the reason you've had such a great 2022 yeah. is because of the hard work that you put in. You've had four years on commercial radio yes. and only two on your own show. Yeah. And the results are resounding because the the work that you put in when Zanele, when we were at 947, Zanele used to sleep there. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and Zanele would and I would come in and be like, yo, Zanele. Like go home. And yes. I literally, she had a blanket and then, <laughs> I did. And we all knew that that's Zanele's blanket. She sleeps in the other studio. Like, but it's so dope because the hard work that you were putting in then you still put in now. And it shows in your career. Thank you, man. Other moments when you look at when you look back on your journey and you're like, I'm glad I did that for myself. Whether it's believing in yourself, mm -hmm. whether it's putting in the hard work, whether it's listening to someone that, you know, was your manager that was like, Zanele, this is the route and you, you decided to go with it. Other defining moments in your career where you're like, that was the step that led me to this. Sure, I definitely, firstly, and I mean, I promise I'm not just bringing this up because I'm with yeah. you. I firstly am so grateful for all of the people I've come across yeah. because I feel like there was such a big influence on who I am today yeah. and even the broadcaster that I am. There's moments when I listen to myself and I'm like, ah, that sounds like Tando. Mm. Or oh, ah, there's Manzu. You know, mm. even there's Msizi, you know. Mm. Um, but I really, really think that first and foremost, one of the biggest things that I did for myself was um, deciding in terms of when I was going to leave the different stations. Because mm. there was always, you know, certain factors mm. in terms of, you know, Zanele, don't go. Mm. So I remember when I, the first time I went to like 947, at 5 FM, it was like a thing of like, they could possibly be, yeah. you know, a little bit of a, um, an opportunity. Yeah. And I was like, you know, let me go now. And for me, like that growth in that year, I, I don't think I could have gotten it anywhere else. Do people know at 5 FM that you almost didn't take the job? Yes. You're very skeptical. Does it? Um, I remember the day, I think it was a Thursday. Yes. You came to Zuli and I, and you were like, mm, it's lit. <laughs> because the dream, right? I'm at, at nine four seven, and it's like I'm having a good time. Yeah. But there's five FM. There's also another dream because you can have multiple dreams as a person. Mm. 
That's another dream that now is coming to me much earlier than I expected yeah. um, in my career. You were crew at 947 and doing overnights yeah. uh, on weekends, 1 a.m. And now Father Fair was saying, come, come back. and be on the radio for a week. How, how hard was that decision? I mean, I know because you had a conversation with Zuin and I about how hard it was and how mm -hmm. confused you were. Are you proud of yourself for having made the decision? And how hard was it really outside of the conversation we had? So I think that it was very difficult because yeah. I spent many nights crying about it. Yeah. But then I asked myself, why am I crying? Yeah. And then I realized that that crying, yeah. it wasn't even fear. Mm. It was because Hashem, I'd like to believe that as much as fear sometimes grips me, I, don't, I never let it get a hold of yeah. me. And I appreciate that about yeah. myself. But I was crying because I didn't want to disappoint people and because I didn't want to leave certain people. So the first time when I moved from five, when I was just volunteering to 947, mm. I didn't want to leave because I was like, oh my goodness, Justine and Liesl, they've given me these really great opportunities and I love those ladies. And then, um, then uh, and Malba. And then when I moved from 947 back to five, the reason I was crying was because I didn't want to disappoint Grant. Mm. I was like, I love Grant Nash so much. I can't believe we all think of Grant when you make decisions. <laughs> that <man>. Grant Nash. <laughs> Including my producer here, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. We're all literally like, what would Grant say? Yes, we literally <laughs> We do. need to get those tags. Yeah, you know those, what, what, what would God. Jesus do? What, what would Grant, Grant do? <laughs> I know a lot of us on radio yes. that are like, oh, what would Grant? I still speak to Grant. Yeah. So I know that he's got a very big, I guess, a chunk of, of influence in our lives as radio yes. podcasters. Yeah. And that was the thing for me, which I hope is maybe a little bit of a lesson to anybody yeah. who's watching, is that you can't make your decisions based off other people. Yeah. And I'm someone who grew up a people pleaser. Yeah. I, I say it proudly because it's where I come from, yes. And um, I think at the time, as I was growing and evolving, I finally realized that if I stay for Grant and then I'm unhappy, mm. I, unfortunately that's not gonna serve me. Mm. And it won't even serve him because now I'm an unhappy employee. Mm. So that was pretty much what it came down to. Now you're in the thick of things. Oh girl. Lunchtime Radio Queen. That's right. Silly Matunzi Bay. Thank you, Jesus. SABC One. Uh -huh. How big that is. I don't think I really felt Everyone it. that you know from the Eastern Cape <laughs> watches you <laughs> and listens to you. Yes. National. <laughs> I know. God is good. Insane. It is. It really, really What is. does your family say? I mean, my mom tells me almost every day how proud of me she is. Yeah. That is my queen. Um, my dad. Huh? Who's going to tell you about my dad? <laughs> <laughs> Of course, my dad, Shem, I love him, Roy. Yeah. But um, he's that person who wasn't sure about everything. Yeah. He was like, um, I'm not 100%. And he never yeah. ever said it out loud, but it was just even in his silence. Yeah. Then I remember when I landed the show from 1 to 4 a.m. Mm. at 5 a.m. And this is kind of cute, actually. Um, what happened was he called me the one day, uh, right afterwards, when I had started for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And he was like, I listened to you. You sound good. Aww. And I was like, thank you. And it was kind, that was kind of like his reassurance of like, okay, now I believe in this thing that you're Aww. doing. Yeah, so he woke up at like one to four to listen to you. Also, because we're dragging our parents into this thing to yeah. be like, yeah, I went to varsity and I did that degree, but I actually really want to do this other thing. Thanks. And you kind of have to follow the dream with me because you're my parent. You just made me realize I might need to pay my dad back because I never finished. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but he paid all of that money. <laughs> you just like, you yeah, this degree, but I really want to do something else. Yeah. I have another dream within uh, yeah. this dream that I'm, I'm, I'm chasing right now. Yeah. So now with all the, these dreams and like the relationships you have with your brothers and your, and your family, does your family sit back and think, Wow, she's an Ah, uh, They call me a superstar, yeah. which I mean, I'm going to be with your name and your surname now. Yes, they do. Like, <laughs> <"Zanele Potela." laughs> Sometimes they actually really do. Yeah. My dad calls me Pout. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. Because that's who you are, Queen. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, they really do kind of um, always tell me as well that they're proud of me. Yeah. And also, just like, I think they really try to help me where they can. Yeah. Because you know, this thing that we do isn't yeah. easy. Um, so I really do appreciate them, best siblings ever. Do you know, I always, I always say to people, when you're a creative child, mm. though, even before you knew you were, right, there was always a teacher, particularly in the earlier phases of school, yeah. that just saw that there's something different about this child. Yes. Do you have a teacher that made you feel like, there's something in there oh, that, goodness. that needs to be Just brought out. out. Mm. I think one of them, I won't lie, and she told me this, I, I, I think I only 100%, I mean, there were many, yeah. I don't want, so I don't want to leave anybody out, yeah. but there was one teacher, uh, Ms. Good, mm. and she was somebody who had like years of experience. She taught my sister who's like 10 years older mm. than me. So, you know, she had a little bit of a soft spot for mm. me and everything. And I remember at one point uh, when I was in high school, she was like to me, Zanele, you're literally the best actress at the school. 
And for me, I was like, this woman does not need to be reassuring me like this. Yeah. And she'd always consistently tell me that, you know, I'm good at what I do and, you know, there's something about me and everything, which I really do appreciate mm -hmm. um, because I feel like, you know, even with an Oprah, because hi. Oprah's here. Thank you, future Oprah's. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> even with an Oprah, it took yeah. that one teacher yeah. that believed in her. And I, I believe teachers really, a lot of teachers see us before our parents see That's us. That's true. I remember teachers that spoke to me in like grade three. So you're just like, these are people that spend so much time with you that see so much of your potential mm -hmm. because your parents just see you for a bit for when you. they come back from yes. work. And they see you for you, right? So yeah. they see you on weekends, but your teachers see you express yourself around 100%. other people that's you in social settings. Yeah. So shout out to all the teachers, yeah. by the way. Babes, so um Kiala, we made you. So I wanted to hook up Zarela with my brother. Then I thought, this is what I mean, sisters, because Zarela's like my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was like, I yes, I do. My Babes, there on the lunchtime show, I first like started <laughs> off teasing myself, right? Yes. And I was like, I am the mayor of Singletown, yeah. right? Then they were like, ah, uh ah, -uh, Zanelli, you're not just the mayor now because you really want to stay single. Yeah. You are the president. Yeah. Then the other day, someone came through and went, no, you're the ancestor of single town. And the community. Okay, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're everything. So um, I'm very single. That is me. And, um, you know, I think. So I think before, what happened was I was really focusing on my career. I mean, yeah. think about it, man. So I used to sleep at night. Yeah. Like, when was I going to see like, anybody or <laughs> do anything? True. Exactly. Um, and I used to always like tell people, whenever like someone would approach, they would be like, I would be like, listen, I'm focusing on my career. But mm. even then, I also do just think that it's a timing thing, if that mm. makes sense. Because, I mean, now I'm more open to dating. So, you know, there's dates here and there. Slide right now the DMs. <laughs> no. Slide mm, in the DMs. Okay. Uh -huh. But um, even at the time, like we were always like, I remember spare names used to be like, I'm sure there's so many people in your DMs because they're my big brothers. And I was like, no. Bro. There's no one there. It's, it's, it's your dry. DMs can't be worse than my DMs. I, what? Legit. I'm actually <laughs> on my what? phone here. No, no, no. Okay, so how are they worse? Which DMs do you want? <laughs> Please, Twitter, I want Instagram. Instagram. That one's always juicy. Please Instagram me. Let's hear Yo, it. This is so exciting. You know, you know what you're going to see here? You're going to see Let's my see. guests posting <laughs> <laughs> flyers of the show. Literally, yes. you're seeing Metro FM. Look who's Let's in my DMs. No, uh -uh. Let's go to requests. That is where. Mm, There's I'm no one in my DMs. I'm comfortable even giving you my phone. I feel like my DMs are broken. <laughs> on all my social media, wait, wait, wait. on my Instagram, on my Twitter. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. There's someone here. Man, so, do you want me to? You, is that a is that is that a secret? No, no, no. Read it. Okay. It says. I'm not um, scared. It says. I'm sure I'm not the only one to say we must hear in your voice your laugh. Okay, fine. They said, but cool band on radio. Okay, here we go. It's radio <laughs> DMs. <laughs> I don't know if, if I don't know if boys see me as just the radio girl. No, I get it. You know, because like I said, for me, and you know, whenever <laughs> I would look in my DMs, for me, usually at least you was radio DMs. Yes. I was one to four AM. There was no one there. No one's listening. <laughs> no one's in the so DMs. You're, okay, so now you're open to love. Yeah. Are you going on dates? I am. I think after like so, what happened was actually right before COVID. Yes. Um, essentially, I was like. <gasps> I actually think it might be time to go on dates. Yeah. Ah, it's sort of closed the whole <laughs> entire country. So how now? How must it happen? Yes. But um, yeah, I guess over the last couple of years, which is like two to three years, I've yeah. kind of been getting myself in the right mindset to be yeah. like, okay, yes, work is important because that really was the reason that yeah. I wasn't dating. Um, and also, I think I'm lying. I think also one, not wanting to break down my walls because yeah, when I was 19, someone broke my heart. I've been single for like almost eight to nine years. It's not single if you're 19. It's I can't. Like, I you're can't. not really dating at 19. Ah, so, so I've been single my whole life, man. So it's about just saying, like, like, man, she do not don't pay me like that. Girl! All like, I'm saying is, no 19 year old can say, we broke up and I'm now single. You were broke never. my heart, okay? I t it took me years to get over him. However, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Now I do also know that, like, there's a whole lot more to life. It's yeah. not just work. And I think that's when I'm like, okay, cool. I need to make more time for my yeah. loved ones. And a partner would be nice, you know? I want children one day, I want to get married. Oh. Yeah. With all, with all of that, um, an incredible career that you've carved for yourself in the past four years. Thank you. Your highest highs? Ah, <sighs> I definitely have to say, um, it's always the most unexpected ones. Yeah. So for example, for me, it was the time when I got to go and cover Global Citizen. Oh yes. Yes, uh, the red carpet. 
and um well you're not in that stampede after that. no i wasn't in that so we were media you know? <laughs> yeah they treated the media so nice but they're on top we saw beyonce you were airlifted thanks <laughs> i saw beyonce in 4k now guys please i didn't have a phone for it though because my phone got stolen the day before however <laughs> i can't prove it but i was there i promise um but i I'll interviewed take your word for it thank you <laughs> I interviewed people like Denai Gurira, nice. you know, it was the first time I interviewed Bonang Mateba yes. and all of these different people. I was this close to interviewing Trevor Noah, but it will happen. It will. Um, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I think that was one of my biggest highs. Another really big high for me was um, getting to host the Gen Next Awards because that was something that I really wanted. You know, I saw Paul Modiadia doing it yeah. and I was like, God, please do that for and me as cool. well. And they're cool. Yeah, they really, yeah. really are. But for me, I think it was also just like... A, how quickly God answered that prayer for yeah. me. Where I was like, guys, I reached out to a random email and then they responded yeah. and then they chose me and it was really incredible. Yeah. But also, uh, radio awards, I think the Bright Stars Award when I yeah. did not expect it yeah. and also being nominated in my first year yeah. for being of doing time. Show. Yeah. Girl! Yeah. Like, and also being the youngest. Yeah. Like, God just You're probably the things. youngest in history to do lunchtime on South African radio. No, I'm not. Who was younger than I you? I think it you. might be Tando Tabete. Lunchtime. Yes. Because well, Tando used to do 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, it's like lunch, isn't it? Well, it's fine. You're still in my circle. It's, yeah, all, yeah. it's all staying in the circle. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is, honey. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. But another one I won't like. Sally Matunzi. Oh, bro. Like, I mean, that's something I Legendary grew up watching. show, yeah. Dude, like, I, I still pinch myself, and I'm still always like, you know, there's millions of people who would want to be where yeah. I am, but God is so faithful, so yeah. And your lowest? <gasps> I think a lot of times, especially because we, we lead our lives in, in social media and on yeah. television and on radio, people don't see your lowest. Yeah, that's um, true. What was that moment for you where you felt like, wow, I'm, this is bad? So do you, do you want it particularly like in the entertainment industry, if that makes Any, sense? anyone. Okay. So, I mean, I think I, I want to share this because I also felt like it's something I did want to share yeah. in general. Um, it was, and like, I mean, I feel like I lost quite a few people when I was a little bit younger in high school. Mm. So that was when I lost people who were close to me. Mm. And it hasn't happened to me recently. So thank you, God, mm. for protecting my loved ones. But I think one of my lowest was um, a time when I was like having like spiritual attacks. And like, it was, a, it was a time when I, I really, like I wasn't sleeping. Mm. For like almost close to two months, I, like, I, f I didn't feel like I was myself. Um, I think it was, it was really difficult like to get through that thing. And also because like, I didn't 100% know where know it was Know what was happening, from. yeah. Exactly. See, now I'm getting emotional. Aww. Okay, so, <laughs> no, I guess I'm getting emotional because for me, like even afterwards, I think the biggest thing I was like, you know, God really proved that he's there for me. Yeah. Like I felt him throughout. And when I say spiritual attacks, like I want to explain it in the sense of being like, you know, I was getting terrible nightmares, but they were so vivid and I would see it bleeding into my actual like spirit like my life mm. you know type of thing and luckily i've got like a really great support system when it comes to you know my spiritual life mm. in the sense of my um church leaders mm. and they were always able to sort of explain like different dreams to me and all of these things mm. but it was always just attack after attack so like like Manzo, can you imagine for two months you're just not sleeping every mm. night you wake up at 3 a.m mm. and you know 3 a.m is the times mm. when like things are you know mm. so um you're yeah. also scared to sleep because the dreams are horrible 100 yeah. percent and it and it happened right after i had done the red carpet for the south african music awards and was nominated for best daytime show for the south african radio awards Zani, that's like now exactly so so my sister was even like to me when i told told her like that that's what was happening to me she was like sissy people can see the things that are happening mm. and not to say that it was someone because like sometimes it's just the enemy bro like it's just things that are happening unfortunately um but for me that was really really difficult because like i say i wasn't sleeping i wasn't myself because of all of these things and also just like really it was really bad stuff and even to do with like the people that i loved and everything and even myself and whatnot it was just bad but god is good because now i feel like not only am i stronger but i also now just have the real assurance of the fact that god will never leave me nor forsake me how did you get through that Prayer. I know it's like the easiest thing that people say, but I prayed. Like there was no moment where I wasn't praying. And mostly because I even remember like I had to do radio shows where I felt like mm. crying, mm. but I had to then like put a smile on my face. So I don't like this. I'm getting emotional. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you. Do you understand the gravitas of your dream? And Ooh. coupled with the actual talent that you have? I think now, even after the spiritual attacks, I understand it even better, if that makes sense. 
because um you know they say that dogs don't bark at cars that are yeah, stationary. That aren't moving. Mm. Yeah, and um, I don't think I hundred percent fathom it as yet. Mm. And I say that because um, for me, like you know, I'll sit back and I'll be like, yo. God gave me all of this authority like to ask for things mm -hmm. and then he just gives them to me and everything and he trusts me with them. Mm -hmm. And so when you say do I understand my dream and even just like the gravitas mm -hmm. of it, I think I'm learning about it every single day. Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate God for trusting me with it because mm -hmm. like I said before, it could have been absolutely anyone else. Mm -hmm. Manzo, anyone could have been sitting in our seat. That's eh? true. Anyone. That's true. Um, so I think I also do pray for wisdom uh, just to be like, God, please help me to know exactly what it is that you want me to do because at the end of the day we are here for a purpose and to fulfill it mm -hmm. um so i don't 100% understand it yet mm -hmm. but i'm excited too because then i know that we're going to take it all the way to the top i so, love yeah. you so much i love you more. are you wise beyond your years stop it man you sweet are, but yeah. also your love for god zanele thank you yeah you, you kind of i kind of got like can see the kind of person you're going to be and the kind of mom you're going to be i think you're an open book uh of a person but you're also really wise thank you really really wise what is the one thing that really really breaks your heart um in life straight off the bat i mean gender-based violence yeah uh, it's happened in my family mm -hmm. you know um children not being looked after the way that they're mm -hmm. supposed to I hate that. I absolutely am obsessed with children. Mm. That's why I can't wait to have my own, everyone. Mm. Auntie, my Not can not wait, Zanele. Wait. Uh, I'm doesn't wait. wait. Are you? <laughs> I, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not about to be a mother, exactly. okay? Please. You heard it here first on Moments with Mansui. Thank you yeah. very much. Mm -mm. Um, no, I'm definitely not anytime soon. Mm. Um, but I can't wait. But uh, things that break my heart, it's definitely gender based violence. Children being abused and not treated properly mm. because children are here to be taken care of. Mm. Um, and also just young people not having resources to uh, be able to achieve their dreams. Mm. There are so many talented young children that are, that are falling by the wayside. 100% yeah. that unfortunately just didn't go to former Model C mm. schools and don't know a president, someone or mm. this or that, you know, type of thing. Don't know a Zanele or a Mansui because, you know, they unfortunately just don't have those resources. Mm. And I, I hate that. It's, it's terrible, but I'm glad that, you know, we're a generation who's trying to fix it. So, yeah. You're living your, your dream that you had now and as you grow, there's new dreams that we get mm -hmm. and with the new dreams, there's new devils with new levels. Mm. Um, what is the new dream that's evolving? Like, Ooh. what are you waking up for now? You're like, okay, this is what I'm working towards. This Ooh. is what I'm journaling about. This is what I'm praying about. Okay, um, for me, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm kind of one of those people who doesn't always believe in like speaking about things prematurely. Yeah. But we're covered by the blood of Jesus. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Mm. I will I speak about it. Um, I want to get a couple of shows commissioned. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot of ideas. Yeah. And I think that, you know, God's put me in the position to be able to put them together, yeah. ask the right people for the resources and yeah. everything. And I'd really like to do that. That's a really big dream on my heart. And of course, I love lunchtime radio. But yes. of course, at some point, you know, you want to go and you want to drive people home yeah. or to breakfast. You don't want to eat breakfast yeah. with people, you yeah. know? Uh, so. That's all in God's hands yeah. and he'll do it when he needs to. Yeah. Um, but another one, acting. I was about to ask because you were saying that Mrs. Miss Good. Miss Good. Yes. Years. Yes. I, was saying, <laughs> I was saying that you were a great actor at school. Yes. Are you following that up? Babes. It's like one of the biggest things I want to do right Why now. Why haven't you done it? There's auditions happening every day. No, and there really are. But yeah. like, guys, you see, this is the thing about the entertainment industry. Yeah. As people discount how difficult it is to get into those rooms. Like as much as, you know, it, it does happen, I won't lie. Um, but it really is sometimes a struggle to be able to like speak to the right people mm. and like get them to actually take you on. Because remember, it's agencies mm -hmm. that take you on and then send you out to uh, It's also auditions. credibility because they're like, oh, this radio girl now wants to act. Exactly. And you're like, well, I actually was an actress. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I even went to a marketing course at some yeah. point at the market theater. Like it's something I really have been yeah. trying to invest in and I really do want to do. Yeah. And, you know, at some point, I went live. I was up for a really big role, mm. but then unfortunately, because of my lack of experience, mm. I didn't get to do it. But for me, I kind of took it as a promise from God to be like, I can see that you can, you, like you. It's on your radar. See. Exactly. It's on your radar. Exactly. So it's just about a, t a matter of when and how and where, and God will decide. So yeah. Young Zanele, mm -hmm. eight year old. 
what would you say to her? Oh, now you're gonna make me emotional again. What's wrong with you? <laughs> um, I would say uh, that like she doesn't need to please everyone. I think that like a big part of my life is centered around that in terms of like always wanting to make other people happy and even now like I still sometimes do it and then I have to make myself snap out of it and it can be like a little bit terrible like I even remember um you know the, at other point I stopped being friends with a couple of people because like there were other people kind of made me realize that hey man you know and this person takes only yes Monty, are you also crying what's happening uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are such a beautiful gang human signs. guys Monty is so cute she also cries when her friends cry this is her gang signs for what like you're such a gummy bear we're side <laughs> But, yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, it really is one of those things where I would tell her that, girl, you don't need to please everybody. Like, you can stand up for yourself because that's something I've had to teach myself over the years. And it's actually crazy for me in terms of, like, I remember I said to you that I, God put people in my life who have just been really amazing to me. I really think that God put those people there to protect me because I don't know if I would have been able to stand up for myself 100%. So he was like, while well, you're, like, working on that, I'm gonna put these people here as like your angels, you know? People like the likes of you, Anele, Zweli, and and and, you know? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, and now I think though I have learned it. So I'd also tell her it's gonna be okay, baby. Is that it for Taylor, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> the first guest on yeah. Moments with Monsley! Thank you so much for coming, my baby. Thank you. And can I just, can I say something? I know it's your podcast. Okay. Oh something? no no no! You have a podcast coming. I do. Is that I do. What you to no. Say? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We'll find some little to <laughs> podcast very soon. But okay, you can say what you want to say. I wanted to say, Mansi, thank you for being you. Like, thank you for being as resilient as you are. Thank you for being an absolute queen at what you do and always standing up for yourself. And I say that, like I said, as wow. somebody who has always found it difficult to stand up for myself, seeing someone like you do that, then inspires us to be able to do so. Those who find it difficult. And when I say resilient. Like Mansi, you've gone through so many things, like even in the last two years, and you stayed the course, and you said you're gonna press into your purpose, and it's so beautiful, wow. and it's incredible, and you're inspiring. And I love you so much, and it's only the beginning. God's got such beautiful things for you because you are amazing. That's all I wanted Thank to say. So I love you. Kevin, are you in on this? <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course, babe. I really appreciate that. I appreciate you. Uh... Whew, that's moments with Monsu. <laughs> I'm going to bring you someone else that you love. Then I have a great moment. Get to know them. Get deep if you want to. Um, uh, but that's what we're going to do on this podcast. I hope you loved it. I know I did. I know my guests did. I did. We're looking forward to Zanella Fotela's <laughs> podcast. Oh, you see, this is what Monsu does. She like pushes people forward. This is her podcast. Like This is live. It live should be like, like that. Oh. Until next time. It's just some more moments with Mansui.